Today, we're designing and making a contemporary wood light with a laser cutter. This one is inspired by simple perforated materials that I've seen in a lot of architecture projects. To design this lamp, we'll be using a program called Rhinoceros and start by drawing the overall shape of the wall panels. Each side of this lampshade will be roughly 7 inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall. With the overall outline complete, I draw red lines to use as a reference for locating cutouts in the wall panel. The horizontal row will be for the interior frame that holds the light fixture in place to also attach the wall panels and provide support. Each slot is an eighth inch tall by one inch wide and spaced one inch apart. For this project, I'll also be cutting slots vertically in the panel where thin panels will be installed. The vertical panels will add rigidity to the light fixture since the perforations that will be cut out of the walls will make it slightly flexible. The slots are the same size and spacing as the ones that we just designed for the frames. Now, we can move on to designing the perforations which will be 1.5 inches tall by an eighth inch wide. The ends of the perforations will be curved with a 3 8 inch space between them. I also decided to include a smaller piece at the top and bottom of the panel. Before copying the pattern across the wall panel, I selected all of the cutouts and added them to a block by using the block command. This will let me easily change the pattern in the future by just modifying one of the blocks. Now we can copy the perforations across the wall panel. Next I draw the rough shape of the interior frame which will be a 7 inch square to match the width of the wall panels. I also copy the slots over which I'll modify later to create tabs around the perimeter of the frame. I offset the square perimeter inwards by 1 inch to create a border. This will be the frame at the opening of the light fixture that provides additional support for the wall panels. Following the same steps as the vertical panels, I explode the slots that I copied over, delete the overlapping line, and use the trim command to finalize them as slots around the perimeter of the frame. Then, I copy the frame over and draw a circle at the center of the frame. This will be the location of the light bulb and the cutout will allow the light base to be pushed through and connected with the nut that comes with it. I also decided to create openings for ventilation in case I decide to use an old light bulb that gets warm. The last part of this two-dimensional design process is to create tabs along the longer edges of the wall panel by following the same process as before. We copy over the slots from the wall panel, get them to their locations, and turn them into tabs. There will be two wall panel types for this project because the tabs need to be offset from one another. With all of my projects, I test my designs by extruding all of the components with the extrude command and pulling them up to the depth of the material that I'll be using in real life. I work between the perspective, top, and side views to rotate each piece into place. I also use the move command to connect tabs with slots and the mirror command to quickly duplicate similar pieces to the opposite side. This 3D model came together without any issues and this is how it looks. Now, I gather my materials including 8th inch cherry plywood, paper masking tape, plastic card to apply the tape, utility knife, super glue, and pendant light kit. I'll also finish my contemporary wood light with natural oil, but you can use whatever finish you want. I apply the paper masking tape by unrolling it, aligning the edges with the plywood, and getting the air bubbles out with my plastic card. This will protect the plywood from scorches, burns, and debris from the laser. I load up my Glowforge laser cutter, insert the cherry plywood, set up my file in the online interface, and start the process of laser cutting. This contemporary wood light took a lot longer to laser cut than I expected. There were two sheets to cut with the wall panels that ended up taking 45 minutes per sheet because there were so many perforations. 
As fun as it would have been to watch the entire cutting process, I set up a few time lapses while I stepped away a few times to work on something else. With all of the pieces cut, I apply blue painter's tape to hold all the small cutouts onto the pieces so that I could easily transfer everything to my work table. I find it easier to clean up the scrap pieces this way than to try and pick it up or vacuum the crumb tray of my laser cutter. Now, it's time to remove the paper masking tape from all of the pieces to reveal the beautiful cherry plywood underneath. Then, I bring over a natural oil and apply it to all of the pieces with a lint-free cloth. To assemble this contemporary wood light, I start by organizing the wall panels so that the tabs at the ends are pushed into one another. This will ensure that I install the vertical panels on the correct side of the wall panels. I bring over my Maxi Keir super glue and apply it between the slots where the vertical panels will be installed. I do this for all of the wall panels so that I could insert them all at the same time rather than going one by one. Now, I take the vertical panels, align the tabs with the slots in the wall panels, and press each one into place. If the vertical panels are a perfect fit or a little too thick, I also use a rubber mallet and lightly tap on them until they go into place. When the vertical panels are installed, I apply super glue between the tabs at the sides of the wall panels and between the remaining slots on the back side of them. Then, I bring over the frames and install them into the wall panels one at a time. Now, we just need to repeat this step with the remaining panels until the entire product is assembled. With the frame and panels assembled, we just need to install the light socket and light bulb and the contemporary wood light is complete. I love the way that the light filters through the perforations in the cherry plywood and the way that the vertical panels look around the perimeter of this contemporary light. It's a visually dynamic product to look at throughout the day and at night when it's in use. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out the wood products playlist on my channel and consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you again next week.